Okay, welcome everyone to our Bountiful City Council meeting on Tuesday, April 14th of 2020. I'm Pete Bradshaw and I am um, the mayor of Port Town tonight. Our mayor, Mayor Lewis, is joining us online. Um, and so he is dialing in, but I think it may be a little hard for him to conduct the meeting uh, while being online. Um, so he's with us and we'll be able to chime in, but uh, I'll be conducting. So the first thing we need to do is we have asked John Eggett if he would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you mind doing that for us, John? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Randy, I think you're on mute. 
<laughs> Which, if you're listening online, that is probably a bingo square for you. I'm unmuted yet. But yes, please re please report on that. And I, I did, uh, I did uh, zoom in to the um, Utah League of Cities and Towns meeting with uh, Lieutenant Governor Cox today. So, uh, yeah, any anything you want to report on that, uh, Kate, and any other things, that's great. Okay, um, for my council report, um, so you know, I serve on Lakeview Hospital's uh, board and they had asked me to uh, serve on their crisis care committee for the coronavirus response. We had a crisis care committee meeting this morning. Um, and what I was happy to report is that the hospitals were well prepared should they be needed. They um, have reports from the head of pharmacy. They have what they need there. They have um, a, a good supply of uh, testing uh, swabs and a great supply of PPE. And, and they have a plan set up so that they can safely treat anyone um, that has the virus. And they've successfully uh, segregated the, the hospital so that if you have some type of other um, need, if you find that you've uh, got an emergency appendicitis or broken arm, they can safely treat you for those other things as well, uh, as well as um, any you know, expected mother. So uh, it was a, it was a hopeful meeting and it felt good to know that we are prepared that the amount of time we had to see um, how other states and other localities are reacting that we have this great time to prepare and be ready and we should be feeling good about what we've got in terms of resources to get to. That's my report. All right, moving on to consideration of approval of expenditures um, for a greater than thousand dollars for March 9th, 16th. 23rd and 30th, and the February financial report. It appears since we're only in meeting, I just think I should announce this for all of our listening audience. Um, so, what it also be meeting one per month, which will mean we have more expenditures in our one month meeting than we normally do. So, with that, does everyone have an opportunity to review those expenditures? Any questions? Madam Cochin, I'd like to make a a motion that we approve expenditures greater than $1,000 for March 9, 16, 23, and 30th, 2020, as well as February 2020 financial report. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. All right. We will now be moving on to item number five. Um, consideration of approval for a crime machine's proposal for rebuilding of uh, three turbo units at the Echo Reservoir. And Gary, I believe from you, will be presenting Alan's play at Town Downs. I will. Okay, so we'll turn to that you. So, this is for the completion of the rebuild of the hydroelectric units at the Echo um, Reservoir generation plant. And this is a contract that draws very near completion. In fact, the, the rebuild is done. That are painting um, by next week, we should be getting power back as early as possible. Here, they will be getting power from the um, hydroelectric units at Echo. This is for $475,302 that will come out of retained earnings. Um, the total project cost to repair all three turbines is $1.227 million. Um, we estimate as we think at the beginning of this process that it would be between one and three million. So, I wanted two million dollars. So happy with where this is coming in. All instances, but that is just uh, I'm happy to answer questions. Any questions? Comment if I could, Madam Mayor Pro Tem. Um, the uh, power department was able to. Uh, we have new turbines coming from China, and not in time for this uh, generation yet. So the fire department arranged with Prime Machine to refurbish at least one, was it one of those turbines here uh, that we had that was damaged. And so we will have generation from all of the available turbines once the, uh, once the project is completed this week. And that'll be a huge uh, financial benefit to us as we begin generating power for the spring. So we do have another turbine that will be coming still from China. I believe it's just one. And uh, it will be installed after this generation year when the power plant ramps down. But for now, 
now we're going to full generation for the summer. So. Any other comments or questions? Uh, do you have to make a motion? I'd be happy to make a motion to approve these expenditures as listed right there. Second. 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 Uh, multiple seconds. So, with that, uh, all for vote, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Moving on to item six consideration of approval of the purchase of 33 transformers. And I believe Gary will continue to play the role of Alan Johnson minus the laptop. Exactly. Um, although I had a laptop once for a brief period of time. <laughs> um, where this is a regularly scheduled replacement of inventory for our transformers going overhead and had now transformers. Um, we have received two bids from distributors, and based on the total cost of the transformers, we're recommending that the that we first be made by um, Annexer Power Solutions for seventy-eight thousand five hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Do you have any questions or comments? I have one question for you. Uh, in our uh, part part of that, we discussed the potential transformer being part of is are any of the transformers considered in here one of those uh, part or is that a separate thing? No, I don't know specifically, but uh, but we do have from what I understand. Um, so that is the kind of transformer that we do keep, that we do have on hand, whether or not it's in this batch or not. It's not something we have to order for special for the premium part. Of it. No. That was my question. Thank you. And no further questions. We look for a motion. I have to make a motion that we make the purchase from an extra power solutions for $70,535 for these stock transformers. As well. I'll second. A second. All those in favor, please aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. We'll move on to item seven consideration of approval of the MICA Steelworks bid for seven steel poles with Gary uh, Hill continuing to play the role of Alan Johnson. So, um, last year the council budgeted a capital improvement project to replace Speeder 575 on 31 south of Jane Orchard Drive and Fort East. Um, on the south end of town. This uh, purchase is for the seven steel poles that will be part of the project, which is actually 30 new poles total. Um, we received several bids and recommend purchasing the seven pole, 24 inch poles from Mica Steelworks in the amount of $169,060. Any questions or comments? Of note on this item, if I could quickly, is that uh, Michael Steelworks is the only company that could meet our department's 24 inch request in diameter on poles to provide better visibility and less footprint on that narrow street front. So, so there's only one bit on that side. I'd like to move that we approve this. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passage unanimously. Uh, we are moving on now to item number eight, uh, approval of the consideration of the approval of the American Technology bid for directional boring with Gary Johnson, or Gary Hill, continuing to play the role of Alan Johnson. I really wish you could get a laptop. Well, those days are gone. But thank you. Um, so we have uh, several underground distribution circuits and streetlight circuits in the city. Um, council may remember the utility fee was put in place a couple of years ago to be able to replace our um, street lights. Uh, in addition to that, we have a number of other circuits and we are um, providing alternate circuits, alternative circuits to be able to improve the redundancy of our system. The um, directional boring is a big part of that program. It allows us to um, more economically replace those, um, those circuits without having to trench. Um, we've had a number of these in the past. Um, this particular project, um, we received bids from three different companies and we're recommending that the council accept the bid given to us by American Technology Incorporated who have uh, already in the amount of $261,077. Any comments or questions? Only that Kendall and Towns almost made it to prime time on the first of the 
beautiful color photos. Oh. And I wish there was some joke about the line. Yes. But other than that, I will be happy to make a motion that we accept this bid from America. Second. And motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, moving on into what is perhaps his final role playing Mr. Alan Johnson. Uh, consideration of the Pacific Corps invoice for the 138 substation upgrade. Thank you. The uh, council may remember that we recently completed the rebuild of our 138 substation. Um, the last, we knock on wood, but we believe the last component of that is paying time and uh, material costs for to uh, Pacific Corps. Um, they have a certain amount of inspections that they need to do, as well as being on site and performing certain functions. Um, the amount of reimbursement due to them is thirty-one thousand two hundred five dollars and fifteen cents. We would recommend the council to that as well. Could you remind me where um, substation one three is that we have some better shared overlap with this report? So this is the substation that's west of Santa Fe, West Centerville, west of the Legacy Highway. It is our major um, it's our major substation in the city. We share and we do share a path with the uh, Pacific Corps out there. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, if not, I'd like to make a motion. Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to move we approve the Pacific Corps invoice for the 138 substation upgrade in the amount of $31,205.15. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Actually, moving onward to item number 10, consideration of the approval of a decision to concrete proposal for trip hazard maintenance. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Good evening, members of the council. Uh, for the last 20 years, the, the city has employed uh, precision concrete cutting to go around town and cut the uh, trip hazards that are on the sidewalks uh, at your request last year. We prepared a new proposal and gave an opportunity for other contractors to bid on this type of work. But you can see we had a few responses. It's a pretty limited scope of work to be able to perform that kind of stuff. As part of our evaluation, to be evaluated what actually happens in the And a little bit of a ridge rock as we took a look at it. Your performed work and we decided that it wasn't going to meet our specifications. So tonight we come to you asking for approval for a contract with precision concrete cutting to complete this work for around 10. It's a very cost effective type of work. It's much cheaper than replacement, although replacement does happen eventually in these locations. And we're able to cover a large percentage of, of the city. And reduce the city's liability for these tripping hazards. Uh, the street department's included $80,000 in our budget, and that's, that's the amount that we have plans for the end of the year. We have to answer questions. What was it about Red Rock that we weren't able to? The specification is that the surface be smooth and uniform. It also has a slope component. Uh, Ridge Rock's work is very, very it was like it had a lot of ridges. It was not ground up, so it was not uniform. The slopes did not meet the requirements of the ADA, and that's the ultimate requirement. Is that when these trip hazards get cut down, they have to meet that 1 in 12 slope requirement. Were they grinding rather than cutting? They were. Just as a note, that typically produces a lot more. Uh, not just uh, dust for neighbors if you're grinding that amount of concrete rather than just cutting. So, anyway. What was the disqualifying uh, factor for the Ian uh, Duano bid? Uh, Mr. Duano, after submitting his original bid and receiving a bid tabulation, contacted our office and suggested that he might submit alternate pricing. 
they informed me that it was the negotiation at this point and that I was going to install it. Any further questions or comments from the council? Well, you have a question. Have you ever been sued? Someone tripping on the sidewalk? Clint? Um, we've never been sued since I've been here. We have received claims. Do I need to leave the room, Clint? No. <laughs> Project in the upcoming fiscal year for the replacement of a 50 year old building at the street department. Uh, it's mainly a storage building, but it does have a wash bay component to it. It's a basement block and, and concrete frame building, but it's in very, very poor condition. Uh, as a city manager could probably attest, uh, he saw some falling parts on the, on the recent inspection that he had. Um, it's, it's really in bad shape. And so the engineering department's put together an RFP for architectural services so that we can replace that building. Um, we did receive six proposals from architects, some of them very familiar to us, uh, including the gentleman with this JRCA, who's our architect for City Hall. Uh, the proposals were buried in their pricing. And, and usually the expectation for these proposals is that they are kind of bid on a percentage base uh, based on construction value. We did receive lump sum bids. We also did receive percentage type proposals. And those are the three lowest are summarized there in the middle. Uh, 929 Architecture did propose a flat fee of $68,000 you can see the GRCA design was for significantly more expensive than that. Um, Line 29 is not the company that we have dealt with. So uh, we've taken time to contact their references. Uh, we found that the, we do have the capability to perform on this project. This is really a very simple building. Um, in fact, I'd be more concerned about who their sub consultants are for uh, structural, electrical, mechanical, and then about the actual architecture of the building. Since we have a fine example immediately to the east that will intend to match, we don't want to create something too far out on there. Um, we think that uh, $68,000 is a fair fee for that. And discussing this with line 29 architecture, they're more than comfortable in. Uh, there's going to be, as we get into the design of this building, there are going to be some surprises. I can guarantee you that. Our past experience of building the buildings on that site show that the soils are bad, and we'll need to do a little more investigating work to make sure we quantify that appropriately in the design. I bring to you the recommendation of the approval. Of line 29 is proposal, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Yeah. Well, does line 29 have any significance in the engineering or architecture of the world? It does not. Okay. Any other questions? I'm happy to make a motion that we approve the contract of line 29 architecture for a total of $68,000 for work on the Storage and the wash We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
that. And then so moving on to item number 13, consideration of approval of the preliminary site plan for a mixed use development located at 220 North and Main Street. And for this, we will move to uh, Mr. Francisco Scope. Is there one other uh, item? Uh, uh, my apologies, Francis. So no, sorry. We are going to go into the consideration of the approval of the JMR construction proposal for the 2020 concrete replacement projects. I got too excited about Thank you. Uh, everybody here well, almost every year. We prepare big documents for concrete replacement projects around town. This contract. As far as benefit, uh, this work is in conjunction with nearly every department in the city who does work in the, around the city. You know, there are curb gutter sidewalk, dryer approaches that get damaged or need to be removed in the course of that work. Uh, the engineering department administers this contract to help make those repairs as we do utility work. The mission of the city departments. Um, this year, as we prepared those documents, we only received three proposals. And you'll see there's quite a disparity between the high and the low. Uh, that's not, what's not surprising about that is who the low bidder is. And we, tonight, we were introduced to John Eckett. John is the J, JMR. He's son of mine. Yeah. Uh, he's currently running JMR, but uh, the city's very familiar with JR, JMR construction. Um, they've had this contract for many, many years. And I can say that my staff was absolutely thrilled that uh, they were able to get the opportunity that we have to work with them once a day. Um, what's significant about this contract is that we did on a unit price basis, and we have a list of approximately 50 items to be included in this contract. That allows us to complete many of the common types of work that we encounter as we do utility work or other repairs throughout the city. These items are not really tied to any specific budget because Repairs are bid to each individual department. So we leave it to the departments to track their total expenses. We, my department, does assist in the bidding and accounting side of that as we prepare that. Those work orders are coordinated. I don't know that I could give you any higher recommendation for JMR. Um, they've had it for years and they do great work. Very good. Yes, we're all we're bad. So it's nice to spend a few dollars right here, right here in town. It started this company in 1960. For 50 years, my friend built the right site. We never had a technical complaints, any losses, or nothing. For those of you that are on in the audience, which you which you missed was Mr. Eggett um, giving us just a little bit of the 50 year history of this company and, and uh, his pride ownership and, and the work that he does. And so we're excited to have this proposal before us. So um, with that, any questions from the council? I, I have a question for you. Uh, as I noticed the engineering estimates as I went down through this, uh, there was such a disparity between the engineering department, which is a clean view, and these high bidders, uh, to me shows, you know, how do I put it, gouging. I'm very, very impressed with JMR, JMR, their willingness to work with the city to understand what's going on in the city. I was very disappointed with the tax bid. I thought it was way outside of anything we can even consider. It's not uncommon right now. Uh, or keep it was really cheap or really expensive. Well, it's, I like the idea of using people we know. I think it's very important. 
I would like to make a motion that we accept the bid uh, from Chancellor uh, Governor Mike Page from JMR Construction proposal for the 2020 concrete replacement project. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passage of bids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now we will we will move over to item 14 that I was so excited to get to. Sorry, item 13 that I was so excited to get to for the um consideration preliminary site plan for the property development located at 249 Main Street. Mr. Stormett. Thank you. So we're looking at a site at 220 North Main Street. We're in the downtown district. This is the gross fabric site. Uh, those buildings are uh, come down. And uh, uh, the residential component of this application does require a conditional use permit. And we'd like to pair those together with the final site plan uh, approval with the uh, Federal uh, Planning Commission. Uh, this site received a variance to place vehicles along the front. Uh, uh, Along the front yard setback area, um, with the addition that they built on the wall, and that rendering is shown on page 91 of your packets. Um, if you want to flip back between the site plan on page 70 and 91, you can do that. Go uh, we'll over these uh, notes. Uh, there are uh, the site consists of three parcels, they are going to be consolidated into one. Uh, this uh, the planning commission reviewed it last week. On April 7th, and uh, forwarded a positive recommendation. Uh, it was a 7L recommendation with the uh, staff conditions, with conditions drafted by staff. Uh, going back to page 70, we, we're looking at the five different bids. Uh, the two purple ones on page 70, those are the Macy's buildings with uh, office uh, along the main level and then two upper levels of residential. And then we have two other buildings along the two other north. Those are uh, residential units, and then we have another building with three more residential units. I'll say it's the, in the interior layout for the north of the site. Uh, total, we have uh, 31 residential units, two studios, eight one bedrooms, two two bedroom apartments, and then nine townhouses. The commercial component is about 2,400 square feet of uh, office space. Um, as part of this application, they are requesting to close the Main Street access points and have one access point for the entire uh, internal layout of the site uh, from the sort of north. All buildings are going to be, uh, be three-story buildings, and um, we are, uh, we're very well pleased with the uh, current articulation and architectural detailing. If you could go back to that uh, lovely rhetoric that we're very proud of on page 91, uh, where they've got a good combination of uh, horizontal and vertical articulation, which uh, I think it may have been one of my first planning commission meetings. Um, it was my first meeting back in July, if Richard will remember, he was on that planning commission, and uh, that was the heavy advice that the commission gave on was just to go vertical, and they did. And now the, the entire project is three stories, and uh, we still have some issues that we need to work out with the final um, site plan approval, uh, consisting um, basically of a parking where in the downtown district, uh, it does allow for most use developments to uh, have the applicant submit and consult with the traffic engineer and come up with a uh, parking analysis. And they've done that. Uh, the current requirement is 55 parking spaces. The applicant originally placed uh, 42 spaces on their site, and uh, we questioned um, the planning commission and staff questioned three parking spaces. Uh, 
if you go back now to page 90, we've got a, 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 a site plan in which each red dot represents a parking spot, and then we've got a, a quick label of each building. The, the parking study that was uh, provided to the staff was vetted by staff, and uh, I also happen to have a, a transportation meeting on that, that, on that information. So we're grateful for that uh, skill. Uh, the parking analysis indicated that they needed approximately 20 to 35 parking spaces based on uh, the latest recommendations from the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Um, so they are able to ask to the land use authority for the current code to reduce the parking standard. Uh, again, the reduction would be from 55 to 42. For that purpose, we added a condition of approval. Uh, it's a staff added condition indicating that we want to see the management plan. Uh, as uh, they've got the numbers, again, I'm going to focus on page 90. We want to know, we want to simply know of that red parking spot, who will be parking on it, just so we can make sure that it's uh, convenient for everyone, and make sure that. Uh, it, it works uh, for the development on this internal circulation. Um, the planning commission did forward a recommendation by removing um, the parking spaces on 200 North along the southeast corner. They, the commission did not feel that that was necessary as that would alleviate um, some of the uh, landscaping constraints that the site has. Um, as I need to point out, the site is extremely complicated as it has parking creek running literally through it in the culvert. Uh, the site does have a 27 foot uh, county easement where uh, the applicant has had many conversations and meetings with the county where they are letting the applicant place landscaping and uh, parking, but they cannot put any buildings on uh, the actual easement. Um, due to its proximity, obviously, to Martin Creek. Uh, there are issues with the flood zone that encroaches onto the property, affecting three buildings. And uh, the applicant would be required to obtain flood standards or a letter uh, of map of uh, revising uh, that, that flood zone through FEMA. Um, the applicant has indicated to us that they've had a many discussions with the county and that they're comfortable moving forward as is. This is a preliminary site plan review. So it's not final. We would need to go back to uh, planning commission and come back to you for that final approval. And we would like you to uh, ask any questions. The applicant is here, Justin Atwater. If you have any questions for him, but I will be more than happy to answer any questions. The uh, planning commission did forward a possible recommendation, and the conditions of approval are, uh, of approval are listed on page sixty-six of the packet today. I have a question for you, Francisco. Um, these parking spots right here um, that look like they enter and exit off 200 north between the, the two, three uh, unit buildings. Right. How do you access those spots? Do they not exit on the 200 north or are they, are you, they are do. double stacking the cars? No, they're, they're, well, they look at the double stack, but they're not, they're not. There's a little wall separating them horizontally. It's about 18 inches. So the two ones from the north access through that driveway and then the two ones from uh, the south are access from um, 200 north. So, so someone that parked there would then need to reverse out onto 200 north? Correct. Okay. That would be um, two parking spaces that would necessitate backing onto 200 north. And that's how the other spaces that are close to Barton Creek that you're proposing doing away with, those also would have been pulled in and back out to 200 north. And, and the reason that the commission felt comfortable removing the three was based on the location, as they're, they're the farthest out from any other unit, and based on the uh, recommendation from the transportation engineer, it was indicated that they really didn't need those spaces. But we do want to make sure that, that we say, you know, where each dot is it, supposed to accommodate which specific unit or apartment. We want to double check that. Any additional questions? Yeah, the, uh, thank you for that. I really like removing those three stones. Did you say the vote of the planning commission was unanimous? It was. Uh, did the planning commission discuss at all the, the 
potential for articulation on the east side of the east building in deference to the residential neighborhood that lies east. Or maybe is there articulation on the south side of the corner building that might be? Uh, it just seems like those are very visible places to my benefit from the same. Yeah, let me get there real quick. The east side of the east building. Sure, I'm looking at the same side. Do you mean that where, where those three parking spots are being yeah, looked that, that, that side? That edge of that building. Right. So you're looking specifically at the third page, uh, 74. You're looking at that uh, section or uh, elevation label 04, right? Correct. The, the commission uh, did not spend much time looking at that specific elevation, but we can certainly pay more attention to that by. Uh, I think it could be mitigated by adding fenestration uh, windows towards it. I think so too. That's just a pretty cold wall to be facing the neighborhood. So I don't know if it's appropriate for us to just make that request of you or. It is, it is completely appropriate as you're the land use authority and the site plan review. The actual name on the code is actually architectural and site plan review. Also, so it's completely up to us to be discussing this at this time. I do want to compliment the uh, the project uh, folks. I don't know how to phrase that. Whoever the heck did this work? <laughs> I want to compliment them on the vast improvements to this project over the last time. And I know it was an early iteration as well, but uh, it was. I really like the uh, the look of this better now than that. Like, and, and I also want to say that I appreciate that the Bannersville City process as we, we take the preliminary architectural review as part of a work session to provide feedback to the applicant and direction to move forward to come back with a, a better product. And, and that's what we, we did with the planning commission as we did spend a significant amount of time uh, talking about the parking uh, a week ago, as well as um, the applicant being uh, able to work with us on that direction we see. Uh, from back in July, and also uh, through many internal meetings that we've had uh, from staff and from the applicant. Was the variance granted just a week ago? No. The variance was granted a while back. Um, but I think perhaps this is on the staff report today, but it was at least four in September. Is that what I think? So that's the one where I voted against it because I said it was self imposed. I believe Sean Monson did at the same time. I'm just trying to revisit painful memories for your years. <laughs> well, we are very, we are pleased, uh, going back to 91, as the aesthetic component in the planner boxes uh, that we uh, get out of this wall. Uh, and I was obviously part of the variance. Yeah, I think it looks great. Thank you. What was the so other building you were? The corner building. It looks like that. I saw a different view. The south. Facade in the corner building. I didn't see the, uh, the articulation on it when I first looked at these, at the perspective view. So the, this the side that would uh, be on 200 North and Main Street? Exactly. Facing south. Mm -hmm. So, so that's that's not the to look at. We're not talking about the elevation that adjoins this parking lot. Correct. Correct. We're talking about which. Yeah, it's about this one now, right? That's right. That's okay. just that south facing corner. So what page are you on? Let me let me find it and I'll look at it. Give me a minute. Just because we we put a parking lot to the south of there and a street that gives all sorts of a view of that south side of the building. So it would just be nice if it could look as nice as possible. Like the rest of it, like the other street facing these off. I believe we're looking at page 72. Details zero five uh, on that on that angle. So the top biggest picture on that page. Yeah, exactly that. Where well, we have a series of uh, two, three windows and then a door. Um, we could add more articulation by uh, adding another window, even though the area behind that is it's a garage. It, it it can work out. Yeah, it just it seems a little bit blank. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, if it's not a project killer, I would recommend that we 
ask the uh, developer to include additional fenestration or articulation on the other side. And, and that south elevation is one on the bottom, specifically O2, right? The, the, the north one, this is the one from the internal parking lot, which would be 0, 04. I was backwards. I just like to retract everything I just said because that looks great. I'm sorry, I was looking for one. That's okay. I thought it was a single door with two windows. So it would be which one it would be the one that facing? Yeah, well, oh, yeah. yeah. oh, two. Yeah. Oh, two. That's the best. Yeah. Okay. However, we do recognize that elevation, uh, the east elevation uh, on page 74 uh, for people walking or driving on the under north and west could use some articulation. That's image 04, correct? That's 04 on page 74. Any additional uh, comments or questions? I just have one comment, and that is, um, I don't know what, how likely this is, especially with the disease, the virus that will not be named. But I think um, it would be really cool if we could honor Brooks, the business um, owners, similar to when we had Greg Skidros come and we just honored him, thanks him for his business example. Um, I know Brooks Fabrics has been around for a long term. So I think it would be nice if you could give them a certificate thanking them for their years. Yeah, I think we can work with them and I think the applicant, uh, the, the new company owner can work with them too, whereas uh, they spent a significant amount of time uh, with them. Uh, I think even as of last week, they were, uh, Justin spent a significant time uh, of time just hanging out and talking to them. And, uh, Going over the vision, I don't know if you want to expand on that or not, but I think we could work something. Yeah, well, you're talking about maybe having just an in person visit. Yeah, so we could have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have them come in and visit. Yeah, and we can have and it seems like it would be time for a motion. I motion that we approve the preliminary site plan for a mixed use development located at Tiffany North and Main Street. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. All right, we are on to item number 14 consideration of the approval of the preliminary and final site plan for the proposed credit branch office at 260 Northern, 500 West. Back to you, Mr. Schultz. Thank you. This is the uh, desert, the desert, yeah, desert first credit union uh, relocating uh, to uh, 260 North, 500 West in the CH, that's commercial heavy district. Uh, the building is about 3,100 square feet. It will replace the existing building there. Um, they've got a sign that says pretty yard art and crystal pools and spas. I don't think the crystal pools and spa spaces is there. I think they have some cabinetry uh, use of, of some sort. So those uh, older buildings are coming down and this great building, we are very well pleased with architecture, especially where it's located in this part of town. Um, that's why uh, we moved forward as their application was very thoroughly submitted everything by our preliminary and final site plan. I plan the commission. Last week we had a heavy discussion on trees, on street trees. Uh, they had uh, requested one tree along the frontage. We reviewed the requirement. They're supposed to provide four. It was either Monday or Thursday where they already sent me a revised landscaping plan that shows four trees along that front side. So even though we had a conditional approval on this application, uh, there was number five that conditions are already met as they've got those street trees. Um, the planning commission again they folded a positive recommendation to approve the preliminary and final architecture site plan. Uh, the renderings um, look great, and we think that this is going to uh, it's going to lift the uh, the neighborhood as they've got a very nice landscaping plan uh, with other trees, shrubs, and other types of uh, 
floor, not floor, but ground treatment uh, here and there. Uh, that's all I have. Um, so we do recommend that you approve the preliminary final architecture site plan, probably the bank owner and the architect are both here to ask any questions. Any comments or questions from the council? I would like to ask the question. What is it that made you? Because you were currently on Main Street, right? Yeah, that's correct. So, what, what are the main reasons? If you want to find me, you might need to come up to the podium here. Actually, I'm on the microphone. But if you wouldn't mind just giving us your, your name for all of our audience online. Sounds great. My name is Spencer Park, and I'm with the Drivers Training. So, um, we're really excited. It's a great project. I can say I really like Francisco said I'm usually going to lift this west. I'm really excited about that. I am a little sad to see the Main Street. So maybe you can tell us why. Yeah, the, the building there on Main Street is, is quite old. And so we looked um, at various options to, to freshen up that building and to make it work. Um, and it was more financially viable for us to. Any additional questions or comments? Was there any other thing that went into the decision to move from Main Street? Was that the other building? Yes, that was the building. We feel like also there's a little bit more visibility on that and what to do. Um, but then there's the main reasons. So. Okay. All right. Is that any further questions or comments from the council? It looks great. And thanks for doing this. Yeah, thank you. It's a beautiful project. Appreciate it. Plus, we're right there next to the mattress farm. Just to put traffic out of the mattress farm. It's a dish. That's right. <laughs> 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 yeah, Curtis, you can uh, mattress from that mattress location. Keep a good business example. Okay, we are, we are now looking for a motion. Madam Mayor Pro Tem, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the preliminary and final site plan for the proposed credit union branch office located at 260 North 500 West. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's as we go. All right. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Socially distant. All right. This, I believe, takes us now to our item number 15, our uh, adoption of a resolution. Um, for interlocal agreement on our animal control services. I do not see Chief Ross, which must mean that Gary has changed costumes and will now be playing the role of our dear police chief. That's right. Um, I have no idea how to how to impersonate a guy like that. I don't have a gun. <laughs> how shiny are your shoes? Because really that's how that's how we know these people, that they should shoot the shinies. Not that shiny. Not that shiny. So I'll do better next time. Um, in your local agreement um, that we have before you is simply an update to the fees. Um, Davis County and the cities of Davis County um, work together to provide animal care services um, rather than each city or several cities having their own services. The total amount amount to about $115,000. We could hope to provide animal care services for that amount. Um, so we're pleased with the contract, um, even though our portion has gone up. And you may remember, uh, I want to say four years ago, maybe for those that were here, um, we entered into a new interlocal agreement where the cities agreed to pay half of the operating costs and capital replacement costs for the facility. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Um, the county, and so we, we actually have a formula that dictates that we all agreed to back then what our rates would be. The formula is not changing, just the amount of dollars that we pay. Um, for some reason, Davis County decided that uh, it was important to make these updates by their local agreement, even though really they're, you already approved the, the process. 
So tonight we're just simply asking you to update the local agreement by amendment that we incorporate the new charges for our pre existing local agreement. And the funds are already budgeted. Yeah, so we're going to have to do that again. Yeah. It's like item number five, right there. It doesn't seem fair. I'm not screaming these dogs or cats. I don't know if Chris is doing chicken bites. Are they in there? No chicken bites. Okay. The loser gets in here. Okay. <laughs> All right. If these additional comments or questions uh, regarding the inner local bar or our animal care services. If not, we can just entertain a motion. No, no, Mayor Pro Tem, I would like to um, adopt resolution 2020-03, which approves minutes and reports for the 2016 local cooperation agreements between Johnson City and Davis County for animal control services. Second, good second. So uh, all the question, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Gary, you did a nice job as she crossed. Thank you. Put your shoes for fun. Um, okay, item number 16 um, consideration of a takeover agreement between Brown City and Zurich American Insurance Company for the completion of the City Hall of Model Project. For this item, we will go to our city attorney. Thank you. Um, as the council is aware, we have terminated our contract with uh, the uh, Contractor for the city hall remodel project as part of as part of the original agreement, they were required to have a performance payment on the place. Uh, we had uh, they had met on the surety to perform under that uh, bond under the contract. Uh, they had a number of ways in which they could do that. They had elected to do that through what's called the takeover. What their plan is is to take over the original contract documents along with this takeover agreement. Uh, they're in the process of entering into what they call ratification agreements, which is trying to ratify old agreements with subcontractors to try to keep them connected with the original subcontractors on board as they can. Uh, the feedback we're hearing is, is that they have most, if not all, of the subcontractors on board at this point. The next step in the process is simply to enter into this takeover agreement. Um, some key things to um, be aware of here is, is that we are, this is based on Lloyd's estimation, he has asked for um, a, a substantial completion date. Uh, this is in paragraph seven. A uh, substantial completion date of uh, the second, I'm oh, sorry, six. Um, you know, I don't know if we have what you're looking at in here. Oh, I emailed out a copy, I'm sorry, I should have printed copies as well. Okay. Um, well, let me just tell you. So, uh, originally, the original contract had contemplated that the uh, substantial completion date would be May 25th um, through June 23rd, and um, the final completion date, or sorry, the final completion date June 23rd, June 23rd. Um, Lloyd has, has looked at it and has uh, determined that it would be appropriate to give them a grace period in which we would not assess the completed damages of substantial completion of August 1st. 2020 uh, with final completion of September 1st of 2020. Um, now that number is likely not going to, that, that target that is not going to happen. The, the uh, estimations that they're currently giving us in the short will be doing the processing is more like a substantial completion of the end of November and final completion beginning in December. What these different days mean is that uh, if the city wishes to do so, based on this contract amount, we can start to assess the delivery damages after September 1st, which is just a standard payment for the day of the day. What is that rate? Um, I believe $1,500 a day. $1,500 a day. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at that one. That's one of the attachments to the contract. There are a lot of documents to keep. Um, Track up here. Those are the key dates and uh, numbers that you're, you're going to want here. It's a pretty standard contract um, as far as what happens to take over. Some of 
the council is overly familiar with this process. It's the same process that they go through on the Creek Center Park. Um, Lloyd and I have met with the uh, new contractors a number of times, and Lloyd more so than me, but uh, we've been in contact with them, we've been in contact with the surgery, we've been in contact with the surgery's attorney. Uh, we feel good about the direction we're headed. We think that the team that we're putting together is very motivated and very competent. They will get to see all project done as quickly as they can. Um, so, what I'm, what we're asking for today is that we need approval of the takeover agreement, um, which uh, just basically says that uh, they'll take over all of the contracts with the exception of a few things we're approved with this takeover agreement. I believe it is. Um, and we have some help. Uh, the one thing that we don't have, or that we're very, very close to having. Very, very large document is this land use scope of work. The reason why we don't have that yet is because um, our architect and lawyer are going over that with the planning team to help to make sure that they're we're not missing anything that hasn't been completed or if something has not been completed correctly that, that gets fixed. So we're working through that. I'd say we're probably 98, 99 percent done, if not completely done there. I guess if that's a huge document, it's very technical. Um, but we haven't been able to get that done. But we need to get this takeover in place because we're not meeting it for all the time. We need to approve so we can get this um, really good So, what I would ask is if the city council is so inclined to approve the takeover agreement, I would ask that um, you make the approval of the takeover agreement and then add the following to a motion. Uh, there are some numbers that need to be included. I just got this from their attorney at 5.5 today. Um, which is why I did get a chance to get that out to you. Yeah, but, um, there are some numbers that need to be included in, in the uh, contract, probably under the contract balance paragraph, and that is these are the following numbers. The original contract amount is $7,184,110. The remaining contingency is $160,290.79. Due and owing is $309,553.75. And the balance to finish, including retainage, is three million six hundred seventeen thousand two hundred three dollars and twenty six cents. Those, if you, if you want more information on those numbers, either Lloyd or myself, we're happy to provide that to you. I just need to get that on the record that that needs to be included in the contract as well under the, the contract general paragraph. And then finally, what we would ask is that um, you just authorize staff to complete the negotiations with, with regard to um, the scope of work and allow. allow our city engineer to sign all necessary documents to uh, endorse the contract and move this further along. Lloyd's the um, designated representative under the original contracts, which is why we didn't want to sign. Any questions? I have a couple questions. Um, the contractors that had it on the job that had been paid under this takeover agreement, do they get paid? If they if they don't continue, if they say not to continue on the job, they're, they're they get paid. They get paid no matter what. They're, they're, that's their different problem. So we're doing this. Uh, there's two different bonds. What's the performance bond? Which is what we're making claim under. There's an eight bond, which one of the contractors have made to us. I think most, if not all, of the subcontractors now have been paid. The total amount that the surgeons paid out at this point is over a million dollars to subcontractors. So they, they've been, they've already been performing. And, and I believe they've all been paid now. If they haven't, they're, they're probably still just going through that process. Do you know if, if they've all been paid? I said $400,000. So $400,000, okay. But like I said, they've made it in touch. $1.2 million at this point, so they're, they're moving. And does that include materials? Are there any outstanding? That would be a question for Lloyd. That being the point, include whatever materials we deliver as applied to this point. Some of the materials, say that we have to include in this city subcontracting warehouse. So it is available to the project to secure our personnel. My other question was. Um, so we continue with the same architect. Is that part of the agreement that, that Zurich would not replace our architect? 
Will we be adjourning to this room? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is your opportunity for a